Hi everyone, my name is Huan Yi and I'm working with Professor Hu this summer in the physics department. So I'm going to talk to you about percolation. When we're making a cup of coffee or a shot of espresso, what is happening in this process? The water is walking, going through the coffee grounds and depends on how compact the coffee grounds are and what the water pressure you're applying. The taste of the coffee, the sourness, the bitterness are all going to come out differently. So what is this phenomenon we're looking at? We're actually looking at percolation. So what is percolation? In, if we Google it, Wikipedia tells us that in physics, chemistry, and material science, percolation refers to the movement uh, and filtering of fluids through porous materials. And uh, the, pic the picture is a very conventional way of looking at percolation, which is when rain falls onto ground and the water percolates through soil and then it goes into the river. But really, percolation can be extended and applied into so many other fields. So environmental soil physics, as we just talked about, and in fact in petroleum engineering where you want to extract oil. Then actually in conductivity in semiconductors, do charged particles percolate through the materials to conduct electricity or not? Or there is an epidemic spreading and forest fires spreading and more generally network signs. But these are all really specific uh, systems. So if we want to look at percolation in a much more theoretical level, what we're really looking at, uh, we want to think about the most simple scenario, which is a physical space. Let's talk about a 2D space that is a matrix. So here are two examples of the space we're looking at. So. In space is for uh, is uh, composed of two kinds of uh, ex composed of two kinds of sites, which are either blocked sites or open sites. And uh, the gray one here is also open site, but in a second I'll tell you why I mark it gray. So uh, we call the ratio of the available sites to the total sites simply the number between them to be p, and so in this case p is 0 0.6 or 60%. So really what we're looking at is that we will randomly assign obstacles in the space. So when we go through each cell, with their 60%, I'll assign a chance that I'll assign the cell to be 1, which is the open site, it's available, and it's white color. Or it's 40% blocked site, which is, you know, um, a block side, which is black, and you see, and the same thing we're doing for 50%. However, you see the one on the left, the the four sides are just in general. The four sides are forming clusters, and the one on the left, uh, indeed, has a cluster that will span through the whole space from the surface to bottom and then you can see water can percolate through if we put something can go through the media but it's, it's the same thing it's not true for the one on 50 percent on the right so really what are we looking at the difference between 60 and 50 percent is not trivial so now i want to show you if we simply plot the largest cluster in if, if we simply want to plot the largest clusters um, at different peak how do they look like so here the red rectangle tells us where is the largest cluster 50 55 it is growing 56 57 it's growing even bigger you can see that all clusters are getting really big and 59 here you can really count how many clusters are there are, but still it's not percolating through. And suddenly at sixty percent, then there is only one cluster in this space, and it's spanning through. So between fifty nine and sixty percent, we're observing a phase transition over here. So if uh, I just plot the maximum cluster size against 
than UCB, a little bit before 0 0.6. And they're all really small. It start to grow a little bit, but not that much. But right at zero, after 0 0.6, percolation happens, and the cluster size become really big. On um, P equals to 1, size 5,000, it's just it's the size, it's the total size of the space. And at this uh, phase transition uh, point, we call it to be percolation threshold or PC, which is the critical probability. Uh, so indeed, at 0 0.593, there is a percolation happening. So now we have some knowledge about how the clusters look like in the space, but what do we want to do when we have a when we want to see if percolation happens or not. We want to be, so what I will be doing is that I will place random agents that can walk or I mean can move, basically the fluids, you know, in the definition. And I'll see how, how much they can move. What's their movement in this space? So if we're talking about a matrix without any obstacles, which is P equals to one, then you see, okay, uh, I place a random walker in the center and there's an equal probability to go up, down, left or right. And after certain after it walk after it walks certain steps, we will be able to have a distribution of where the the walker end up to be. And let's say we're just looking at the vertical space. And does anyone have a good guess of how that how the distribution will look like? Yes, it's going to be uh, a Gaussian. It, it is a Gaussian fit. It's a normal distribution. Um, it's well study and here. It, um, however, but we see the result is not quite obvious if we want to do percolation. If if the random walkers want to walk in a media that has obstacles that's randomly assigned in the space. So here, 70%, it's possible after a few steps, the agent can walk from the red dot and then up to be, I don't know what the color is, here, and the percolation happens. But in next scenario, it's possible they'll just stuck there or it will, or it, it's, it won't possibly be able to make to up there or down here, which is where percolation happens. So if I send out a crazy amount of random walkers walking the matrices that has the same P, then really I'm getting an array of where their final positions are. And in this array, I want to take the variance of the array um, because that gives me a very good idea of where their final uh, position are, the final positions are. So where are they? Let's plot the variance against the P. And again, we're seeing this phase transition, where before 0 0.593, variance is not going up that much and suddenly after 0 0.5 phase transition you know cluster size are getting really big and the variance the walkers can walk further and further and further so our walker is constrained by how big the cluster size is uh, and not surprisingly if we plot you know the relationship between their final positions and the average cluster size here is just before percolation threshold. Then you see a relatively well correspondence. But next step, I really want to know what is a better what is a better parameter I can use to categorize the clusters, because if the cluster size, if uh, I look at the cluster, if I do a cluster size distribution, and it's quite possible that this is a power law distribution, and then 
average is not the best way to categorize the clusters. So what should I use? And that's something I can look into. Another thing I can do is that um, in empty, uh, so again, in an empty matrix, I can add a bias in any direction I want to, because if I want to apply the system into a real system, you can imagine where water in the soil has a strong possibility going down due to gravity and this small possibility actually heading up due to the evaporation. And so this result in the distribution is again very obvious in an empty matrix, but how do they look like in a porous media? So there are a lot of more questions to ask. And I welcome you to give me suggestions and ask me questions. Thank you very much.